my next guest, I am joined by professional mixed martial artist, fighter, competitor, combat sports athlete, whatever you want to call it, because I wanted to say Oklahoma's finest. I mean, that is what it is, brother. The, ba- the baddest man in Oklahoma, my friend, Tracy Reader. How you doing, Tracy? Oh, I'm good, brother. Good now that I'm talking to my friend. There it's been right. a long time. It's been a minute, bro. It's been a minute, man. I mean, I'm I'm over here rocking the shirt. You know, there's people that tell me you can't rock a shirt. You got it. You're showing favoritism. I fuck everyone, bro. That's I do what right. I want on my own fucking show, bro. Just... I mean, you know, yeah, you are showing favoritism, rightfully so. <laughs> well, my my biggest thing is it's funny because, you know, you know who Jeff Saturday is. I don't know if you're watching. You've been paying attention to football and all that shit, dude. He was uh, I I don't really keep up with it now. Okay. But I think whenever I was a kid, I was really into it. And he was what the center. Yeah. For he the, was the center for the Colts. Yeah. Yeah. So I, rem- I just remember the name. And then now I see him coming out with all these like hard ass viral quotes. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm uh, in the works of getting that guy to corner me my next fight. He's a fucking motivator, man. No, no, for sure. Well, he got the Indianapolis Colts job. They fired their coach. The season was going to shit. The coach looked like he had no idea what was going on. They hired this guy, Jeff Saturday, and people were crushing this, Tracy, because the guy had no, like, coaching experience. He was a former player, right? He knew knew what it took to win, and people were bashing the guy. And I don't know if you know who Pat McAfee is, but he came out there and he bashed all those fucking haters, all those fucking critics. And I said, you know what, man? Like, Pat does this show, man. I love it. I'm a huge fan of it. And I'll rock with that guy, man, because you know what? He stands up for his boys, man. So I mm-hmm. think that for anyone out there in the media that says you can't support your like, you know, your favorite fighters or the boys, you know, the, the people you have good friendships with, I think y'all are a bunch of pathetic dweebs, bro. Yeah, right. I mean, but there's there you're gonna be friends. People are just gonna naturally vibe with other people or or yeah. have those relationships. I mean, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. everyone it's 2022, bro. Everyone wants to complain about some shit. Right, right. Yeah, for but- sure. Anyways, man, how you been, bro? I know, uh, you know, I talk, we talk, you, we talk pretty frequently, man. I know, you know, the last fight kind of didn't go, well, it didn't go your way there, bro. But how, how's it, how's it been for you, bro? Man, it's uh, all is well, you know. I, uh, yeah. I didn't lose any percent of my swag, so yeah. you know that's good. Uh, it, it was such a, a huge learning experience for me, and uh, and I think for others watching me, you know, uh, seeing a little bit what I got on the feet. You know, and uh, man, just uh, I've been great. I'm thankful for the experience. It was fun to go to Philly and fight, you know, uh, hats off to, to the opponent. His coach is a fucking retard, but but Josiah is really cool. And uh, and uh, you know, it was awesome. And and and, and that type of experience that I went through with the the illegal strike, you know, and uh, <laughs> and all that, uh, and not keeping my composure out. I mean, really, I just handled that whole process wrong after I thought, I mean, I thought it was over, you know, Yeah, I thought uh, it was over. very similar to like, uh, what I would compare like Tim Kennedy, Yoel Romero vibes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where he thought he knocked him out and then Yoel, he thought Tim Kennedy thought the fight was going to be over because Yoel wasn't getting up off the stool and they go fight again. And then Yoel wins because Tim Kennedy is running around thinking he won. And, uh, it's an experience that you can only get one way. You know what I mean? You can't replicate that in the training room. And, uh, you know, it was just a good opportunity for me to look introspectively and, uh, you know, think about, you know, some things I could do better to can keep my composure. Cause, cause realistically I, I do feel like I'm the best. I don't feel like anyone's better than me. And if I ever lose, it's, uh, it's just a mistake on my part. You know, I gave that one away. He didn't, he knows he got away with one. I gave that one to him. Yeah. Now, you know, everyone that knows you, you know, you've been on the show multiple times. Uh, The story of Tracy readers continuing to grow, you know, there's a lot of things in your journey, man. And the way you travel and, you know, the things you do, you know, you, you put a lot of work into, into the camp there, but, you know, when that knee happened, you know, cause I know, I'm sure, you know, you know, you thought you won, you know, I thought you won. I thought this shit was over, bro. Like, I mean, what was the initial reaction, bro? What was your initial like reaction? I mean, you saw it. I, I ran away with my hands up thinking I'd won. And then the ref starts yelling, Whoa, hold on, hold on. You know? And, uh, what I should have done 
it was just sat back, calmed down, got ready to fight again. Because if I would have done that, I would have just went right back to fucking him up. Yeah. And uh, but what I did instead was I'm arguing with the ref, I'm pumping up the crowd, I'm arguing with the outside official, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, and I'm thinking, shit, am I gonna get DQ'd now? You know. So there's this high and low of of emotions, and uh, and uh, I'm just going wild and uh really had had a big emotional dump and then even when the fight started back again i was so ramped up that i just started off sprinting instead of just fighting the fight i was already fighting you know i was doing so well and uh it really felt like up until the knee i could do no wrong yeah Yeah. so i think just like staying in that type of flow state that i was in i mean nobody can can beat me when my head's on straight and I allowed something to take my head off. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the coolest thing about it is just an easy fix, you know? Yeah. And I'll probably hire 134 and one. So the it's all good. The same. But what was up with the coach, man? You, you know, earlier you alluded to the coach not being uh, so nice, right? I'll, I'll keep it PG from on my end here. For a second. Uh, uh, well, he just, uh, you know, I guess he didn't like some of the things I said leading up to the fight. I don't think anything I said was malicious, you know, um, just like friendly. I mean, I don't even want to say friendly banter. I mean, fuck, it's not friendly. We're about to fight. Who gives a fuck what's said? I don't give a fuck what anyone says about me. You know, I'm going to we're going to fight. I care more about going to try to do to me than what they're saying. But not, nothing was malicious. You know, he was really grasping for straws, trying to say some of the things I said were a lot worse than they were. And then he wants to get online and talk after the fight. But I mean, he's going to talk cause he's never got to fight anyone, you know, Josiah was nothing but cool and respectful. And, uh, but this guy, you know, he's never going to fight anyone. He gets to get on there and talk. He's never going to have to face, go face to face with us, you know? So that shit must be annoying, bro. Ah, I mean, what, 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 what do I care what this retard thinks? You know, yeah. I mean, he's, he, he this is what he this is his moment you know he gets to get some attention a little bit and and i didn't pay any attention to anything he said i didn't respond to any of his posts because because if i respond it gets a little bit bigger but if you go look at him he's getting 10 15 engagements you know because he's a fucking nobody he he's probably he's probably the highlight of his of his coaching career is he just got to go corner josiah you know and uh but what was said though like what did you say something i, I don't know can I ask that? I call I called him uh because he missed weight. I called him heavy little boy. Um mm-hmm. just because he's short, you know, he came in overweight. I mean, it's it's so mild, so mild. And I, I mean, think he missed in, weight though. That that's 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 on him. Yeah, Over right. Camp. I mean, is it on the camp, Tracy? Or is it on the fighter just specifically? Uh man, it's it's a little bit of both because for me as a fighter, my camp doesn't have to worry about it. I would never fucking miss weight. Um if you come from a wrestling background, that means something. And actually, when I was in high school, I missed weight at a tournament. And all it takes is doing that once. You'll never do it again because you know what you think of yourself after you do that. You know that you could have made it truthfully. And he knows that. They were calling it – they called it uh, 8 a.m., 9 a.m. on fight day trying to negotiate the fight up to 160. And then when we weighed in at 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. or whatever, he weighed 160. So he didn't even try after 9 a.m. Yeah. or whenever they call it he did they, they, they quit trying yeah, so it's sucks. it's on the fighter but also my camp would never allow that you know that would just and and i don't even know why i'm surprised because of my six pro fights i think four of them have missed weight or have been had to negotiate catch weights or they were just gonna pull jesus so i mean it's just uh you know not <laughs> Ninety percent of the people that still fight out there are still fucking pussies, and that's just the bottom line. It's a ninety percent. Yeah, for sure, ninety percent. No, so for you, man, you know, again, we talk about the journey, right? All you did was win, 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 win. You'll continue to win after all this one, you know, all said and done. I mean, but... shit, I a little bit feel, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like at the end of the day, yeah, I was stuck in a bad position, and and I understand the stoppage. I'm not even, gonna, but the reality is, I was fine, and. uh Everybody that was there, everybody that saw it knows that shit was a fucking wrap after the knee. You know, there's a reason he took four or five minutes to recover. And, uh, and, uh, 
let me keep going and we'll see how it ends, you know? Uh, yeah. But, but you know, like uh, this media world that we live in, just people in general, I think it's always been like this, right? You win, you win, you win, you win, you win. People are, and let's get real here, man. I mean, everyone's all, all, all up on you, right? Anthony Pettis Pett said this best to me. You know, when you win, everyone's on your nuts, bro. Everyone's, you know, all happy. But what happened, man? What was like the kind of reaction? I mean, did you see a lot of people kind of like turn, you know, as soon as you lost one? Man, uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's uh nothing, you know, I haven't, uh, I didn't expect, you know, I, I it was, if anything, you find out who your real, your real friends are, but it, it wasn't super bad. You know, the people that support me still support me. Yeah. Uh, my, I come from a great community. They support me. Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. dip something, but guess what? There's still not a whole long, like, uh, list of people that are like, Oh, now I want that match that he lost. You know, I think, uh, I really don't feel like I lost any stock, you know, even though yeah. I have the, the, the loss, I, I don't feel like I lost any stock and, uh, you know, I don't really engage a whole lot on the social media side of things. Uh, you know, I mean, you should have seen my DMS, bro. Oh my God. It was bro, how, how do you deal with that, bro? Like, because I mean, it's, it's a real thing, right? Like not everyone gets to be undefeated, you know, as much as we, we want it to be. And that was the plan. Right. But as, as we know, Tracy, like, you know, life isn't what you always plan it to be. Right. Like there's, there's a certain road out there for you. Like, how do you, how do you deal with that kind of shit, bro? Well, luckily for me, I, uh, I can dish it out really good, okay. which I have to be able to take it really good. I mean, okay. I was getting, I was getting messages like cut your mullet and kill yourself. Oh like, my God. Yeah. Oh bro. It is so bad. And that's mild. That's, I mean, I was getting these crazy messages, but I mean, these people aren't real. They're not going to say it to my face. Their profiles don't even have profile pictures. You know, they're realistically, they oh. are, they're supporters and they don't even know, you know? So, uh, they're invested in my career, whether it's good or bad. And I am not invested in really anybody besides me and my teammates and, uh, my family and, and community. So, uh, it, it really, that is so, uh, minuscule to me. Uh, all like all the, the, all that shit, you know, any of the hate, I guess, it's just like, whatever. Cause nobody's saying anything to my face. You know what uh, I mean? They pull out the so, keyboard. Yeah. I, and I have a pretty good like disassociation from the, from the internet stuff where it's just like, I mean, come on, you know what the internet is, you know, I mean, I've never been the type of guy to get on there behind a fake account and, and, and yeah. troll, but I'm the type of guy to say something, you know, if I think something, well, I'll say it to you, you know, and, and, and we'll work it out that way. But, but it, uh, is it a common thing though for MMA athletes or, I mean, you know, the hate, the hate people get even like from you, like you're, you're working your way up to get into the UFC, which you will be in the UFC one day. But I mean, is it a real thing? Even like when you're fighting for like CFFC or LFA and all these other organizations, there, man, even at at the level you're at right now, man. When you, uh, yeah, I I think when it starts is whenever people can gamble on your fights. So people are pissed that they lost fucking money. Oh you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like, hey, nobody wanted me to win more than me, you know, or mm -hmm. or just twenty uh, bucks to you, bro. Fuck you. Yeah, I mean, or it's like his his community. You know, they probably. Uh, didn't like you know I mean the bottom line is All the people supporting me don't fucking like him the people that are supporting him don't fucking like me that's just the fight game so uh I I think you know when you get out of the local shows and you're on a bigger regional show uh that's when it starts you know it'll be bigger when it's in the UFC but I, I feel like most fighters are super emotional with the uh, with stuff like that but with me you know I mean me and my team, we do our best to hurt each other's feelings every single day. So it's like, you know, it's way it is whatever. These guys, these guys really aren't that clever, you know. Yeah, you're a pretty clever guy, man. What what does the future have in store for you, my friend? Or I mean, are we talking? You probably what fight in December, January. What what is your realistic goal? Man, I would I would for sure like to fight uh, in December to see how many fights would that put me at this year. I think I've had uh, I think I've had four this three, year four, three, four yeah four okay. i'll put you at five for the year may and then october really should be like six yeah. um but you know i had some issues with opponents pulling out and stuff but so that would put me at five for the year that would put me one short of what my goal was was six um so i would like to fight again in december and then next year i'd like to fight another five or six yeah. even seven times i mean i want to stay active you know I, i'm not fucking around this is what i do so um for sure gonna fight again in December. Don't don't know 
what I don't know the five W's, you know, what, when, why, who, where, whatever the fuck. Oh, is there anyone that's going to line up though? This is how I know you're really good though, man. That loss happened, right? And no one's signing next to you. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's still a little like, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm on medical suspension uh, till November 23rd or something. Maybe, I don't know. It was like 45 days after. Um, so, you know, that, that's been the holdup. I, uh, we had something actually that we could have done in November, but because of the medical suspension, you know, which is, you know, I don't really understand. I was totally fine, but I think a lot of it too is that I wasn't super pumped on talking to the doctor after I just told him I was fine and get the fuck away from me. So they probably had to slap, slap me with the maximum because of that. Um, <laughs> I got hit with 45 days. So, but uh, man, you know, my manager's, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, he's good. Um, Chad and, and, and Brian, the guys at Sucker Punch, you know, all, all those guys, they're, they're, they'll find me the, the right opportunity and, uh, and we'll get in there and we'll crack some heads. Yeah, shout out, shout out to Sucker Punch, man. They're doing some real good stuff out there. For real. Yeah. I love those guys, man. They, uh, they really do a good job making me feel like family, you know, especially after the loss, you know, I was like, I mean, there's a plethora of thoughts. I'm like, shit, these guys are going to fucking drop me, you know, and, and it was the, the the total opposite. You know, if anything, they were super pumped on me and and explained to me, you know, nobody comes back from what I think, you know, from thinking you won and then and then uh, and then I having think. to do it again, you know, because you're like you get over this hump and then you got to go get over the hump again. So. You know, these these guys, I can't say enough good things about Sucker Punch. Shout out to them, man. Did you get to see the fights this past weekend? Come on, brother. Every one of them. Shit. Well, oh. I, uh, uh, I didn't watch I didn't watch the women's fight. <laughs> oh, God. You, saw, did you see my boy Andre? Yes, bro. He looks super good, man. He looks super good. He, uh... Are you playing with me or are you being serious? No, no, no. He looks uh, good. <laughs> Why, why does he, what, do you not think he looked good? I think he looked good. I'm just, no, I'm just saying. I, I just, you see, sometimes it's very hard to convey your sarcasm, my friend. Oh, no. After no, knowing bro. you for, for a minute, I'm still not great at, at getting your sarcasm. The people that know have known me for, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, I, I understand. Uh, <laughs> but he, he looked good, man. He just, and he's super good about fighting through when he's tired, but fuck, man, it looks like he gets tired so, um so early on but i mean it's never i mean he always wins so i mean you know what Pulled what can anyone... 30 27 then man I, I was very pumped to see him man uh i mean what'd you think uh, of the overall night bro uh i also liked his attitude about not being happy with the dominant decision you know it was a pretty dominant yeah. decision he wanted to finish you know i I'm shit i like that he's calling out bo nickel too because i feel like a lot of people are silent about him no i don't think i don't think they would give him that fight yet no, come on. They want to put him in there with, uh, you know, they want to build him up. He's yeah. a star. It Which makes sense. But uh, it seems like if Bo keeps winning and uh, Andre keeps winning, they'll, they're on a crash course, you know. What do you think? I mean, because you're a wrestler. You grew up being a wrestler, man. What do you think of this bull nickel hype since we're on it right now? Man, he uh, he's just looked pretty untouchable. But I think right now some of it's like the mystique, kind of like before Kamzat fought Gilbert. And it's just like. Oh, like he just, I mean, we've, uh, we've seen so little every time he's hit someone, he's put them down. And every time he's got to hold them on, on the ground, he's just Submits them. worked them. But, uh, you know, that, that mystique of like being afraid of the unknown. Cause we really don't know what he's got, you know? Yeah. And it's like when Kamzat came out there and one punch Gerald Mershart, you know, yeah. and it's like, Oh fuck. Can this guy be t like, he can wrestle and he can do that. You know? So I think, uh, let him get in there and have a have a fight that goes long past the first round, and then people will be less afraid, and then people will not come out there so tentative, you know. Because the last guy that came out there and fought him, who's a, he's a he's a good fighter. I mean, he doesn't. People can say what they want. He's a CFFC champion. He doesn't fucking suck. Yeah, no, he's a good fighter too. Yeah, he was like six and one, seven and one, seven and one. Yeah, and came out there and did not throw one strike, and uh, just kind of waited. You know, I've not seen the pat like. Maybe he's a counter fighter. You know, I haven't seen any of his fights, yeah. but uh, it looked to me like he was overly tentative, you know, it's and a mental uh, thing you think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's just it's just the mystique of Bo Nickel right now. But who knows? Maybe he's really got that fucking sauce. What's crazy is uh, there's some guys in the top 10 for sure that could probably beat him right now or even not in the top 10.
But you know who he matches up pretty well with is Alex Perea. Yeah. Like, unranked Bo Nickel could, I mean, maybe could go out there and take him down and choke him, you know? Man, Alex looks so big, bro. My, I mean, so and Izzy's not, Izzy's not small, but Izzy looked like a fucking welterweight out there. Next to him? Next to, next to Alex. Yeah, bro. Dude. Alex, massive. Dude, I going into the fifth round, I was like, bro, there's no way. Because now I have this phrase now, getting Leon. <laughs> getting yeah. Leon is like my, my phrase now that I use with my buddies now when – Ever they're like watching the fights. Everyone's like, man, this guy can could this guy like is Izzy about to get Leon? Everyone kept saying that, like, is he about to get Leon, bro? And sure enough, bro, I was shocked. People said that the stoppage might have been early. You know, not everyone's gonna be happy. Not everyone's gonna be happy with the ending of a fucking, you know, movie and shit like that. So I'm not surprised. What did you think, bro? I thought it was a good stoppage. Man, um, you know, if if they let Perea knock him the fuck out, they're they're gonna be yelling protect the fighter, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, I tend to when a world title's on the line and and that much money, you know, when you when you look at what these guys' wins bonuses are, you know, yeah. I uh and being a fighter, if I was Izzy, um I would uh say make damn sure good and well that I'm not coming back, you know. But yeah. you you really, you know, is like Izzy said, you can't complain. Like he said, he he would have liked to have gone out on a shield a little bit more and maybe see what happened what would have happened, you know? Yeah. Um, but I don't think anyone can really have a problem with the stoppage. Yeah. I, I didn't think there was an issue with it, man. I thought it was very fair. I think, I think Goddard gave him enough time to recover or cause, cause we, we seen some shit stoppages, Tracy. And, and anytime somebody gets stopped still standing, uh, no mm-hmm. matter how bad it is, even Gaethje Ferguson, cause he was still standing. People are going to be like, Oh, but he was standing early, you know? And it's just so, it's a, uh, it's more like common in boxing, you know, when someone gets stopped standing and it's not super common in MMA, but you know, he was, uh, he was in trouble for sure. Yeah, man. It's crazy, man. You know, speaking of, you know, stoppages, bro, one fight that we didn't, you know, complain or, or we pretty much, there, there was no argument on the stoppage was that Frankie Edgar knockout mine. It was pretty, pretty ugly, bro. I mean, yeah. w- do you grow up watching Frankie Edgar like myself here, man? Yeah, man, and uh, you know, especially like being what was that fight at thirty five or forty five? Uh, Frankie Gutierrez. I don't know it off the top of my head. I do believe it was forty five though. Man, but it's uh, you know, and he fought as low as thirty five, and no, it was uh, thirty five. Sorry, sorry, it's thirty five. He fights at thirty five now, and he held the belt at fifty five at one point. And yep. I'm a fifty fiver, a big fifty fiver. That no way in hell could I make thirty five. So I always have just found that super impressive about Frankie that. Uh, that he fought at basically his natural weight and won the belt. I remember watching him back in the day beat up BJ Penn yeah. and Ray Maynard fights. I mean, I would have liked to have seen him go out in a different manner, but MMA is so unforgiving, you it's know. Not the WWE, bro. Not everyone gets a fairy tale ending here. Yeah, man, and uh, you know he didn't take a, a gimme fight. That guy was good. Was he eighteen and three? Yeah, you know? he was seven zero. Oh, he's like six zero oh, and one in the UFC. Yeah, yeah. So. uh you know, shout out to him for for not looking for the uh, the the fairy tale ending fight. You know, he wasn't fighting no fucking bum. Yeah, yeah. Seeing him violent. I mean, and he's had a few. You know, the Sandhagen. He got flying knee by Sandhagen. Yeah, yeah. And Chito, uh, the, the, the Cheetah. He just had like three just violent, violent, violent knockouts. And uh, you know, I'm sure he could still get in there and mix it up with the best of them, but. I, I, I'm glad that uh, that we don't have to see something like that happen again to him. Yeah. Is there anything that anything else that put, that stood out for you to you uh, particularly in this? Uh, Man, what about Ann Hooker? Uh, that was so wild and weird what that guy was doing. Dude, I thought that guy was gonna win, bro. When 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 he uh when he almost got the uh, it was the first round when the he knee bar. Yes, and he's got what like f- multiple wins in the UFC by knee bar. Yeah, he submitted uh, Clay Guida. Like that, like in a round. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I mean, he he's. Uh, I thought he was gonna win, bro. Maybe, maybe he's. I mean, I don't know if he's a one trick pony. Maybe he just felt real outgunned. Maybe he felt like he only had one way to win. But, eesh, that was. Uh, I I wouldn't be surprised if he got cut just because of the the performance. You know. Damn, really? I, dude, because who? 
UFC, who wants- Madison Square Garden, you're opening the card. Yeah, who wants to see that shit? Yeah, no, no, I'm sure Dana wasn't happy. Yeah, and then the the Poirier Chandler fight. Watching that fight is just the type of fight that makes you really want to fucking fight next weekend. You know, yeah. like it was it was a it was a banger. You know, um, that's the Poirier man getting it done. I love the 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 shit. You know, he's like he was fish hooking, blowing the the blood on me. I'm like hell yeah, he was. What the fuck you is in there trying to win, same as you. You know, like fucking fight. It's a fight. And, 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 you know, people are talking about this and this hits home for me. Oh, the hands on the ground. This is one of the things the ref said to me. You're, you're a professional. You know the rules. I'm not sitting there like, hang on, let me fucking see if his hands on the ground. Let me, these, these guys, you know, some of these guys are sportsmen and athletes, but some of these guys are just full blown fucking fighters and they ain't thinking about that shit. They're thinking about fucking the guy up and, uh, winning. Yeah. And winning. And you get the next one. Yeah, and you get lost out there. You just, I mean, you're just trying to damage the guy, you know? You're not sitting there thinking about, oh, hang on, let me think if his fucking, you know, is it bad to blow blood out of his nose? Like like Chandler said, I, I needed to breathe. Sorry. You know, that, that's what he was thinking. Yeah, I did, he said, what did he say? He said, I didn't invent gravity. Yeah. Awesome, you know? And, uh, I mean, <laughs> You know, it was just a fucking banger, bro. That was a that was a dog fight. I loved it. Were you you weren't a fan of the of the Wei Lee Carla fight? Man, I didn't even watch it, bro. Wei Lee got even... a good finish, bro. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it 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 uh I, I saw the finish, I saw the choke, that was nice, but I just figured Wei Lee would beat the absolute fuck out of her. You know, I figured Carla was outgunned anyway. I was off doing some other shit during that fight, so <laughs> Well, let me, let me move on to this, my friend. You're a very busy guy, but I know you and I, we were watching Peacemaker when we first did our first interview. Is there anything you're watching now, man? I know you're busy doing doing the damn thing and working out working the room and shit, man, but man, you did watching you, anything? You, you catch The Watcher, bro? The Watcher? No, I have not. On Netflix, bro. Oh, bro, you got to catch that shit. Okay. It's about like, uh, you know, I don't want to spoil it. It's based off a true story. I mean, obviously some of it's uh, fabricated, make the show sweet, but uh, sure. they, uh, they, these couple and their kids, they buy this house. And, okay, so uh, I've heard of the show. I've heard of the show there. I heard it's freaky. Yeah, I mean, it's not like paranormal scary or anything, but it's like realistic scary. Like this shit could be real, you know, so. Oh, like that, this that- shit. Oh, th- thanks for telling that to a new homeowner, bro. <laughs> <laughs> me and my roommate we watched it you know we live in a small apartment so we're like hey what's cool about this is we know ain't nobody in here yeah. but uh one, one of the 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 ladies her her family trains at one of the gyms i go to and uh, i i uh, give her lessons and stuff i was like if i had your house i would be fucking terrified of that show you know what i mean because she she's got you know quite the setup yeah. and i was like there could for sure be somebody living in there and you wouldn't fucking know it Christ. That's yeah. Not, uh, anything else? <laughs> anything else? That shit will have you wanting to downsize, brother. Fuck, man. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, it, it's different, bro. It's different. I mean, plus, also, man, you're a fucking MMA fighter, man. You, I mean, you, you don't, you walk down the streets, man. You're not scared of anything. Someone looks up to you. So, someone were to try to jump you, you tell them, let's fucking go. Right, right. I mean, yeah, not to, not to be a. Uh, not trying to be a hard ass or anything, but yeah, if somebody if somebody breaks into my house, they're they're uh, it ain't gonna be easy. Yeah. To put it that. Way. Yeah, for sure, man. Anything else you're watching, man? So the Watcher. People, I've had people recommend that. I, I I didn't get into the Dahmer shit. Really, I I watched that one too. Uh, man, I I really uh, when I get into something yeah. that's that's something like serious, uh, I I do truly get into those shows. But it's so hard for me to get into stuff that's not just hilarious. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I watch, you know, funny stuff. And most of the stuff I watch, it's like in passing, you know, because I am so busy and and uh, I have a, a, a short attention span. You know, I'm on my phone and shit. I'm, I'm watching funny shit most of the time. That's why I like the Beast, Peacemaker. It was pretty good. But uh, my schedule's picked up. You know, I'm I'm teaching more lessons. I'm, I'm training, uh, you know, just as much, if not more, than I was before. Yeah. And uh, really uh, trying to enjoy uh, time with my friends, you know, so maybe we're we're not watching uh, stuff as much, but we're just, you know, hanging out and uh, life. 
Yeah. And, and just building the camaraderie, you know, trying to hang out with my teammates a little bit more outside the gym too. Yeah. I think that builds a strong, uh, a stronger bond between all of us makes the training better. Yeah. Ryan Hoover's an animal over there too. Yeah. 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 We, uh, his, his, we've got a nickname for him. We call him race car, Ryan. So race car, Ryan. Yeah. I don't know if that'll be his actual fight name, but we've been calling him race car, Ryan. And then uh, today we coined me as Monster Truck Tracy. Nice. I saw him uh, last win with the glasses too. Yeah, yeah, that's his. Uh, that's his thing, you know. He uh, kicking ass over there. He he's so not a douchebag, but then he puts those glasses on and he just looks like a douchebag, and we love it. The people love it, you know. Everybody loves yeah. it. Hell yeah, man! Are you uh, planning to come out here and train in Texas again? Man, for sure. Uh, I I don't know. Uh, I don't have a timetable, yeah. but. I fucked around and made great friends in Austin and, uh, and in Fort Worth. I was just in, uh, Fort Worth not too long ago. Um, you know, and, and I've got, uh, you know, some friends in San Antonio now too. Uh, Peter, you know, uh, his coach, uh, Bobby and, uh, and those guys, you know, I'd love to go see those guys, but I, it's so hard to put a timetable on everything. Cause when I got a fight coming up, I really do like to be at home with my team and, and, uh, and I almost always have a fight coming up. So it, it's it's tough. But, uh, I mean, for sure, we're going to figure something out. Oh, yeah, man. Last one, man. I saw you training with uh, Bryce Mitchell. He's got a tough fight with uh, Toporia, I believe. Toporia, yeah. Toporia. yeah. How, what do you think, man? I mean, dude, after training with him, he, you know, I uh, I think he could beat anybody, you know what I mean? And, and his coach, uh, you know. Uh, training down there with with Bryce and TJ Brown, you know, they're both uh, super, uh, super nice guys, you know, and welcome me with open arms. I've been down there a few times, but I just uh, I spent a week down there and uh, was actually staying with uh, Coach Roly, you know, Roly Delgado. Shout out to him. He's one of the nicest guys and uh, and really passed along a lot, passed along a lot of wisdom, you know, uh, technique wise but more than that just like on the mental side of things and it was the perfect time for me to be down there and uh after my loss you know and uh him really kind of put my head back on straight because I was uh for a little bit I was on some bullshit you know so uh uh but those guys are super awesome I can't say enough good things I think Bryce gonna whoop this dude's fucking ass you know I think this guy's a heavy hitter but guess what everybody's a heavy hitter and Bryce is not uh somebody who's gonna be scared of that and I think if Bryce gets into the mat, he's going to fuck his ass up. It's going to be a good fight, man. Tracy, as we're nearing the end, man, is there anything you want to let the audience know? Man, just shout out to my whole team, uh, Coach Mike, Christian Durr, even shout out to Roley and Bryce and all those guys. Shout out to Jared McLaughlin, uh, one half of the Hog Brothers. You know, that's a, that's that's our tag team. We're like the degeneration X of Oklahoma MMA. Mm-hmm. Uh and uh, just really shout out to everybody that supports me and shout out to you, big dog, for having me on here. Oh, no, I appreciate it, man. You're welcome here anytime, brother. It's always great catching up with you, Tracy. Yes, sir. And to anyone out there, folks, thanks for sticking around, listening to all this bullshit and talking and listening to Tracy Reader here, folks. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye. <laughs>